Welcome again to another tutorial with Andre Dyson, that's me, from Studio 270 Digital Media Lab at Gale Borden Public Library. And right now we're gonna learn about video recording with smartphones. And right now I'm on my iPhone SE, which I just recently purchased because I wanted to test out the camera. I also will be doing footage with an Android, I believe it's a A10e. So uh, strap on your seatbelts and let's get ready. Studio 270's Digital Media Lab Camp presents Smartphone Footage Tips and Tricks for Recording Footage on Your Smartphone Via iPhone and via Android So one of the most important things about recording video with your smartphone is stabilization Now stabilization can be tricky because you want the image to always be stable there are a lot of uh, utility tools to help enhance stabilization within a video. There's always the old fashioned, hold your hand as steady as you can, but there are many tripods, uh, gimbals, and stabilizers online that you can purchase to help enhance how less shaky your video is. So let's delve into some of the things we can utilize and you can visualize some things that help this process. Stabilization. Image stabilization or IS is a family of techniques that reduce blurring associated with the motion of cameras or other imaging devices during exposure. Optical image stabilization or otherwise known as OIS is a technology for cameras that physically moves the camera lens to compensate for camera movement. Stabilizing your camera phone is very important for capturing footage prior to the editing stage. It is hard to try to stabilize the image in post-production within the software itself. Some of the accessories you can purchase are motorized gimbals, hand grips, camera mounts, and tripods. So the second most important thing to keep in mind when recording video for your iPhone, uh, it has to be sound. So I'm sure you've seen movies where they have a shotgun mic, the long mics on the long stick, over the camera, catching the sound uh, close up, as close as possible without being seen by the camera. And uh, right now I have a small shotgun mic connected to my phone as well as a mic in front of me this is a condenser mic that's capturing the audio at the same sound at the same time so there is uh, some latency issues if those sounds aren't synced up so the most important thing is to get a nice clap where you see a spike in the audio when looking at the editing stage of the audio and you can line up that spike with the spike on the camera sound. So you have the sound of the camera, which is recording. Usually it's a worse quality than an outboard mic or a shotgun mic, like there's a mic right above this camera. So you wanna be able to grab that sound with a professional sounding mic for the best audio. These mics are so good, you're probably hearing some uh, background audio of birds and uh, cars passing by because they pick up so much detail. So one of the things that you have to be conscious of when using shotgun mics is controlling as much of your uh, audio as you can, as background noises. As you can hear, that's, you probably hear the motors outside. Uh, so once that's in your audio, you cannot take it out, especially if, I'm, if you're talking at the same time as those sounds. If there's a pause or a break in between your uh, vocals or your audio you were able to cut that sound out by uh, crossfading it within the software but if there are exterior sounds going on while you, your uh, subject is talking that's going to be stuck in there so you have to make sure that you can control as much of the sound outside as possible and uh, here are some mics to help you do that sound for superior sound Use a shotgun mic or a clip-on mic. 
Sound quality makes or breaks even the best looking videos. If you do not have the budget for a new mic, be sure to minimize background noise like wind, background chatter, and traffic noise. So now that we went over stabilization and sound, our next topic is very important as well. It's called lighting. So right now I'm being lit up via the camera. This is the camera, right? And I'm being lit up via the background of the sunlight. Here's my window. Now, if I was facing the window, or as you can see my hand, the front of my hand is very dark because the light, the camera's facing the window, it's facing the light source. So now the front of my hand is very dark because of that. But now that the camera's facing away from the light source, right? Now the front of my face isn't so dark that you can't see based on the contrast. So I'm utilizing the natural light that's coming into the window as a light source for the camera to be able to see. So lighting is a very important thing, whether you're indoors or outdoors and you utilizing natural light as much as possible without having to spend money or utilize money uh, with the tools and lighting kits and all that, you know, you don't want it to get too expensive. Obviously you're trying to cut costs by using the phone, recording video, so natural light is something that you want to use in your favor. And that is never point the camera, unless for artistic reasons, never point the camera directly at the sunlight. Always tell, uh, have your back or the back of the camera facing the light source. And that will always help increase the visibility in your videos. So uh, we'll go over some of the concepts of indoor lighting and uh, natural lighting. Natural lighting. Use available natural light like a window or an open door with the camera facing away from the light source. Natural lighting is the cheapest way to light your phone videos. As you can see in the diagram below, the sun is at nine o'clock. The camera is at three o'clock. The subject is facing the camera. There is a large gold reflector for key light, a large white reflector for fill light, this is an alternate arrangement that works great during the magic hour when the sun is lower on the horizon. Artificial lighting. Use home lamps, ring lamps, soft boxes, and reflectors. Three point lighting is a configuration that consists of key light, a fill light, and backlight, as we've seen in the last slide. Key light should be the brightest on the subject, fill light should be less harsh only to eliminate the shadows in the background. Backlighting separates your subject from the background to show depth. In this light setup, you can see that the subject is in the center of the diagram. The backlighting is around one and two o'clock, lighting up the subject from behind. The key light, again, is the brightest light that is gonna be shining and if it can be controlled, control it to the highest setting or whatever you see the camera react the, the best to or whatever tone you want to bring to your, your camera setting, depending on your camera setting. Uh, always A, B reference looking through your camera to see what lighting suits you best, but the key light is going to be the brightest source possible. As you see, and the key light will be about four, four o'clock and the fill light will be about eight o'clock, less bright than the key light, only to eliminate the shadows directly across from the backlight. Now, none of these lights will, should be visible within the camera's view, so you shouldn't be able to see the backlight uh, source in back of the subject looking through the camera. So always make sure everything is out of the way as far as your, uh, your framing of the video. And three-point lighting will serve you well if you want to make YouTube videos, promo videos, webinars, and a variety of other shooting situations. 
Okay, now we're going to talk about settings. Uh, it's important for you to know some of the terms involved with settings. It can be a lot depending on the phone you have. Uh, I suggest that you always look in your manual or look on YouTube for certain tutorials about your specific phone based on uh, your phone type. And they usually are a lot of, of the features listed online about your specific phone. But for the time being, we'll be very general about certain settings. And I want to touch on ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. In very basic terms, ISO is simply a camera setting that will brighten or darken a photo. As you increase your ISO number, your photos will grow progressively brighter. For that reason, ISO can help you capture images in darker environments or be more flexible about your aperture and shutter speed settings. ISO stands for International Standards Organization. This is the light sensitivity rating of a digital image sensor. The higher the ISO, the more digital noise in a photo or video. You should keep the ISO below 300. If the shot is too dark, use more natural or artificial lighting. Shutter speed. The amount of time the shutter is open shown in seconds or fractions of a second. The faster the shutter speed, the less amount of blur from a moving object. Aperture. The brightness of an image that passes through the lens and falls on the image sensor. The smaller the f-stop number, the more light comes in. The larger the f-stop number, the least light comes in. Aperture can control the amount of light allowed into your shot. This gives room for creative tone to brighten or darken a scene. Exposure, focus, and white balance. Exposure is the amount of light allowed to hit the image sensor. It can be used to create a mood for creative storytelling. Focus. Focus can shift the viewer's attention to another subject or object to accentuate the center of attention. White balance. White balance defines what the color white looks like in specific lighting conditions. Frames per second. Frame rate. The frequency at which consecutive images called frames appear on a display. Frame rate may be also called the frame frequency. You can check online to see what specs are unique to your smartphone. Simply search the phone model camera on Google, Bing, Safari, or Internet Explorer. For example, my Galaxy A10e Android is equipped with a single main camera of 8 megapixels, an f-stop of 1.9, autofocus, and a 5 megapixel in the front selfie camera. The video shoots at 1080 pixels at 30 frames per second. Here is the iPhone SC shot at 1080p at 30 frames per second. Here is the iPhone SC shot at 4K at 60 frames per second. Now we're on to the editing stage. You've shot your main scenes, you've shot your B-roll using your smartphone. Now the most important thing is to be well informed of all of the apps that are most compatible with your smartphone device. Here are some apps that you can download. For iOS, there's iMovie and ProCut X. For Android, there's Open Camera and Power Director. For iOS and Android, there's Adobe Premiere Rush, Magisto, Filmora Go, and InShot. And those are only to name a few of the many apps available for smartphone devices. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and please stay tuned for the editing tutorial in the next two weeks. Thanks.